This is the Underground King, Slick Wagner Brown. You're watching a three count podcast. Yeah, when the sun goes down, i.e., Nick Dogg. Well, by now, if you've heard this intro, you know what that means. This is now entering 201, and I'm your host, Clifford Red Dog Miller, the man that leads you out that mountain called wrestling. And, you know, you have gone through all of our episodes, or you haven't, and you should, because you know that as your Sherpa, it's never about me, it's about who's entering. So who's entering the ring? You see this man right here. He is a legend in the making. He is more accolades than your favorite wrestler currently. And that's just not even the, the most of the most. This is the man, the underground king himself, Slick Wagner Brown. What's up, Red Dog? What's up, man? I know, like, the last time that we had you on the show, you had just hit, like, was it your 25th anniversary? 20, yeah, I believe so. Yeah. Yeah, 25th. Yeah, 25 years, man. <laughs> this is crazy. Time. Yeah. <laughs> well, like, being in the business for, like, so long, like, I'm sure you've seen, you've, like, seen lots of lots of things can go. I know you're also a trainer, especially being that you were, you know, Killer Kowalski student, right? One of those, one of the things that I've been like trying to figure out is like I've now I'm 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 growing into my my fifth year, right? So I'm in my fourth year next year, obviously will be year number five, and I've always yeah. kind of like wondered like, what do people look at when they see those wrestlers that are coming up through the business and like, what what do they, I don't know? What are expectations? I guess. Um, like as far as a promoter, a promoter's point of view, you mean? Yes, we'll go with everything because <laughs> it's kind of like because like you're a worker too, so you're not just yeah. a promoter, you know. So there's right. like, there's a well, it, it's it it the, it it's different depending on who you're who whose perspective, right? So from a promoter's perspective, the first thing they're looking at is you know where did you learn your art, art of pro wrestling, and that kind of gives them an idea of what to expect, if mm -hmm. that makes sense. As far as like a a wrestler's point of view is concerned. Um, you don't really know what to expect, right? Um, as far as the wrestler is concerned, like it's this is the independence, and we're on the independence, so you don't really know who's standing across the ring from you, right? That person could be trained, they could not be trained, they could have learned from someone who who understands the business, could be learned from someone who doesn't understand the business. There's all kinds of people in our business on this level, you know what I mean? So there's there's not really, you know, you don't know what to expect from a wrestler's perspective. So I think it's interesting, though, because, like, I get to hear, like, different parts of the business, especially having this podcast, right? It allows me to kind of, like, branch out and, like, learn so much more about what's going on. And, and it was something I remember, like, talking about it at, uh, at Bio Pro Wrestling in, uh, in Worcester. I, I had mentioned it. I was like, masters of a craft take about 10,000 hours to spend, right? Mm -hmm. And so while you're young, put the hours in. Mm -hmm. And I realized, like, I'm not a spring chicken. I don't make no fuss about it. And I also don't. I don't hide it really, really, but I do understand about the, the aspect of like working and putting in. And this is why I think it's so important for like someone like me to like talk to other veterans and bring other people on like the podcast and just chat with them about like the, the finer things that tune up because they're everybody's going to have, have, have to have a, like a solid base, right? You're going to have to know how yeah. to do your bumps. You're going to have to know how to do like, obviously like an Irish whip, right? You're going to have to know like certain spots. You're just going to have to know, but like, it was something that uh, that Tom had said, where he had mentioned that uh, uh, you know the the wrestling moves don't matter; it's the in betweens that matter, like how you get into those positions. And I think to me, I'm like, wow, like now I'm just trying to figure out like how to fine tune the transitions. I guess if that makes any sense. Yeah, because like in between uh, the moves is where the character comes out, so that's the separator, right? So everyone's gonna come in and and do you know, what we do, the pro wrestling, right? A hip toss is a, is a hip toss, right? But um, to say that they don't matter is not completely true because you got to hit them at the right moment. And also, like, the execution, right? So I can see a hip toss, and it's whatever. It barely gets a reaction, right, because the execution is off. But I can see another hip toss, the same move. Nothing has changed. It's just the execution. This one is higher, and the bump is cleaner. And that gets a, a, a better reaction. So it's the same move, but the execution changes how people react. And to level up on that is putting it in the right place. That also changes the reaction as well, right? So you can get a mediocre reaction, no reaction, and you can get a great reaction. Nothing has changed except for 
the execution and the placement, right? But the move is the constant. It's the same, same move. But you have three different reactions to that same move. See, and I like that. And that's like, that's, that's where, like, I guess I'm trying to, I'm, I'm growing as a, as a worker myself now is like trying to figure out, like, it really listening to the crowd and like understanding right. how the vibe's going and then like working the psychology side of everything. And yeah. that's not something I want to get into, like talking here. Cause you guys don't get that part. That's, that's just not a thing. Okay. So you yeah. guys have to like, you have to, you go find your own knowledge, but like, those will probably be something like I'll talk more about with you like afterwards, but it's, it's yeah. one of those things where it's like, you have to, you have to interpret it. Everything, the situations differently. Everything's going to be yeah. different, especially on the independent, because you may want to come out as a face, but the crowd may not feel you, so you may have to transition to a heel, and you may have to restructure your match or just follow the same flow. Of the match just reverse the roles, and it's 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 tough because like I I don't have the experience to to handle those, and that's why I think this is why it's so important to me to come and and talk about it on shows like this. Yeah, yeah. Well, that that's that's where like you know reps come in, right? It's mostly reps in that situation. So like if you're in the ring a lot and you know, you're repping out and repping out and repping out. You get to a point where you're not worried about doing those things anymore. You're not worried about, you know, doing a hip toss or a body slam or anything like that because you do it so much. You know, it, it just becomes second nature. So now you can take the time to focus on the psychology part of it, you know, getting the reaction that you're looking for at the right time. You know, if, if your reps are not where, it's, where it needs to be, then you don't really have that opportunity to do that because you're too you're too focused on the moves still, yeah. You know, where where the moves should become second nature, um, like you know tying your shoes or 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 brushing your, your teeth. You know, you do that so much that you don't think about how to do that anymore. You know what I mean? It's one of those things where I like I talked to um, we had Justin Credible on the show uh, a while yeah. ago, and I remember like post production like we were talking and he said uh, he's like listen like the one thing you should always do right call the beginning call the yeah. end and it just yeah. fail the rest in the middle they like, just right. listen to the crowd figure things. Right. maybe the crowd doesn't like you doing stomps right don't do a stomp yeah and yeah. I, I thought that was so cool and i've tried to go back and like do that but i know that the people like i end up working also don't know how to do that so it's like right. i've got to tie myself up and like all right well we'll call this spot here and we'll do this here and we'll do that there but i never tell them like what to do i'm always just like all right we'll just run this run this situation here and if this spot works out then you know cool we'll just keep at it but if not then we'll change it up and figure something else out while we're there and we'll get into you know we'll get into a rest hold and we'll just go from there and we'll see what happens and it it's always unique to like try to plan for the unexpected right um one of the things that i would say is don't don't work down to someone else's level always have them work up to your level and that doesn't mean like try to have the same match you have with with you know uh, a top tier talent with a with someone that's not on that level it's not about like you know doing the same match with this person and that person it's whatever you do it's at the same level of intensity and and, and execution you know what i mean um because you can inspire that person right they're not on your level yet but you can inspire them to be on your level you can you can you know give them something to work work towards you know what i mean they work with you and then now you know they're not going to be able to work with you every night uh not on, th on this level obviously but you know you leave them with a new inspiration like shit this is what i need to work on this is what i need to work on this is what i need to do and now they're in the gym more they're in in the ring more and you just had a, a solid impact on that person in freaking you know 10 minute match and however long it took you to to you know uh interact behind the scenes oh no i and like you just, that i just changed their whole their whole their whole outlook and everything and goals see and that's like uh i, I like that a lot because it's it's one of those things where like i know um it wasn't recent but it was like it was last year i was in a i was in a locker room and uh another promoter for another company was like complimenting me because he was like oh man like since I first met you to now, like you've changed. You've always been in a gym. He's like, I'm going to do the same things too. And yeah. he did yeah. for about two months and then fell <laughs> off. <laughs> yeah. But it's, right? <laughs> yo, it, but yeah. it is so crazy. Cause when you think about it, like what we end up doing, right. Like from like, obviously having like a good, like young wrestlers. Right. I won't put it that way. Uh, they're always putting in like 
a diet, right? They go to the gym, they go to training, they, you know, they go to shows, right? And they're this, it's a constant battle of like doing it over and over and over again. And it does, it does take a wear and tear. And sometimes like you have to kind of slow down on certain aspects of it and just be like, Hey, like I can't be in a gym five days a week, six days a week. So I'm just going to go three times a week, but I'll probably hit it just as intense as I would as if I was in there six days a week. And I'm going to go to training twice a week, right. And work on my stuff and then get back to whatever I got to do. And I, for me, like right now I had a whole car situation where I couldn't even go, couldn't go to training. So like, yeah. It's been about a month and I'm like, oh, I'm just beginning to get back into the ring. But I'm like, in the meantime, you know, I run, run four times a week. I'm in the gym five times a week. Like I'm still right. working on promos and like, I'm still trying to do the character aspects, match watching. Like I, I do all the other stuff that I need to do, but there right. is a thing about physically being in a ring where taking a bump and like knowing you're like, okay, I'm going to be fine. Then yeah. There's, just, there's no, there's no substitute for the, the in-ring stuff right you can do all the cardio in the world in a in a gym but you know it's not the same as being in a ring and part of it is just you know uh your mind just is constantly going so that you know blows you up even faster you know and that and and that goes back to um just being in the ring all the time and getting to that level where you're not thinking about anything and you're not second guessing yourself at all because this is what you do every day this is what you do so yeah. It's it's one of those things too where like I've I've talked to a few of my friends and you know, especially because I moved from going down from Maryland up to Massachusetts and now like it's it's like the wrestling scene here is like so massive and I'm like, yeah. yo, this is so crazy. But then inside that massive group of people, like you can get lost. <laughs> you can get lost yeah. pretty quick. So I've like yeah. try to find some people that I can just kind of like anchor myself to. So that way I can chat with them and hit them up whatever. And like, you know, if, if it wasn't for something like this, like I would, I would never be able to, I would just be like, I don't know who to talk to. I guess this is just kind of like the wash out for me and then just figure it out. But luckily like here, you know, finally things will start picking up for myself in the, in the new England area. But I was like, the being patient game and like just steady, like steady on the course is so yeah. hard sometimes to do. Yeah, it is. It is. But I mean, and that's why you have to be passionate about what we do. Right. Um, if you're doing it for other reasons like money or fame, that doesn't last. You know, the, if you're passionate about it, then that's what's going to help you, you know, get through those tough times. Um, I mean, you know, you have it in your favor that you're a new face to the area. Right. So you're someone that the, 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 you know, the fans in this area hasn't, hasn't seen. So that, that is in your favor. Uh, the flip side of that is normally, you know, you only get, you know, one or two chances to make that first impression. Right. So um, you gotta, you gotta really be prepared. So that's why I tell my guys, it's like, you know, uh, prepar <laughs> preparation takes time and, and opportunities don't take appointments. Right. right. So, you know, opportunities like, hey, man, uh, let's do this, you know, 10 months down the road. That's not how it works. You know, someone hits you up out of the blue. Hey, man, we got a spot open. We need we need someone for this. And that's your opportunity. And if you're not ready or prepared, then it's not going to work out. But that's why it's so important to stay prepared, stay ready, because you never know when an opportunity is going to come. Yeah, it's one of those things I learned in the military too. Was like you have the the what we call the hurry up and wait process, right? It's you, right. you hurry up and then you wait, <laughs> so you right. get everything ready to go. But then you're yes. always at the whim. You're just waiting for that for whatever to pop off to pop off. And it's you know I I've talked with people like Martin Stone who also said the same thing. He was like, uh, and he and he said it. He was like, with the WWE, one thing that they always say is hurry up and get there, but take your time. And right. I'm like that makes so much sense <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 you it's, never you never know it's very unpredictable it, it really is and then like you you work your way to network and talk to people and understand like where everybody's coming from in the meantime you're trying to find like and, and this is where i'm at too and it's like i go to a couple places and and just do drop-ins and try to try to get some kind of just anything and in, in, in right whether it's just simple taking back bumps or learn how to take, you know, doing flip bumps all over again, working in the international, whatever the case may be. It's just, I right. just want to do whatever I can just to kind of keep myself fresh 
on right. it because I know that when when the time comes, like I'm I'm already set. Like my bag's already packed. All I gotta do is just throw my stuff in the back of the car, just get up and go, and I'm out. Like I'm I'm ready to go. <laughs> but it, it's right. like like we've like we've been saying, right? Like you have to be passionate about this. And and it was something that I recently heard uh actually from Mr. John Cena. Thank you for this one. Uh yeah. but he's like, you don't work hard for things that you don't care about. And I was right. like, man. I must love this because this is a glutton yeah. of punishment I'm taking right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, it's like it, on the higher level, people don't think about it, but it's like a movie, right? So there's roles and characters and you might meet someone five years ago, you know, and you're like, that's a good person to meet. And they ha they're in a, uh, a position of, of power where they make decisions uh why you know haven't they reached out or whatever but it's because you know that character or that uh story hasn't presented itself yet you know uh when that when that time comes they, they might go oh shit i met this guy five years ago in this place and i think he would be perfect for that for that role and you know that's how that works you know what i mean uh it, it's not instant like everyone <laughs> thinks it is or believes want to believe it is yeah, yeah I, I was talking to a couple people and they were like, hey, man, like, uh, we definitely want to use you. But we're just we just got to write you into a story. And yeah. I'm like, OK, cool. Whatever's clever. I'm like, I'll, I'll wait. And it's funny because, like, in the meantime, like, I've gone through these whole periods of where, like, at first, like, I wanted to be kind of like the more Deadpoolish type of character where it's just kind of funny comedy. But then, like, as I start playing with the idea of, like, working with some friends and stuff like that, I'm like, yo, I kind of just kind of want to be like just a rolling BA, just a rolling badass. Like doesn't yeah. care, just wants to go through and just destroy everybody. Good, bad, doesn't matter. He just, he just wants, to, you know, the money and like the fame for it. And I think yeah. that's like, I, I, I shot this promo uh, a couple weeks back and I had a couple friends critique it and uh, I got some good feedback on it. And then I got some, I got some excellent critiques back on it too. And I was like, all right, I think we might be onto something with this. So I'm like, I'm very curious on like how I can, change things but the, it goes it goes back to like in the business like certain areas like you have to kind of change your character up or who you who right. your who your character is because just because like i know down down in like the dmv like my character is kind of known for the comedy side of things and being kind of funny although he's still like really intel specialist but being up here it's not so much that way like you kind of there are certain promotions that kind of run that way but you really like there's a lot more like vibrato i guess to put out there for it <laughs> a lot of what just a lot of like uh what do you want how is the right, right word i'm looking for and a lot of stone-faced people we'll put it that way yeah. where it's like you know we're here heavy hitting and i regardless I was like well i'm going to change this character up so that way i can do that in here too cause yeah it makes sense to to fit in to uh to fit in right now and then you know like, eventually like let the other side come out but for now, I was like, yo, let's change this up. Let's bring this to a more serious mercenary if we need to. I was like, let's let's, let's ball out, see what happens. Uh, you, worst that can gotta, happen is go you ahead. gotta remember, like, um, a lot of people fall into this into that trap where they see something working for someone else and then they, they think that they that's what they have to be. Um, but like we we all have our own personalities, right? Each each one of us has a different personality. So I always think it's 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 a good thing to turn that up, right? Whatever your personality is, turn it up to a ten, all right? Because this is pro wrestling, right? It's it's not different than than acting, right? Everyone who's acting in a movie or a TV show is going out there and doing the same thing, right? It's acting. Um, what's the difference between what how they do it and the next person? And that's personality. Mm -hmm. Right. They put their own their own spin on things and the way they execute is different and the way they do things in the right moment is different. How they react to things is different. Like you're going to have a different reaction to the same thing than I would because we have two different personalities. Right. So that's in your favor. If if if, if we're doing a movie or a TV show, which is, you know, pro wrestling on, on the on on any level, right? Um, we don't want, we have six stories. We don't want six stories with the same character. Right. The same individual. It wouldn't be, 
interesting or entertaining to the fans. That's like Groundhog Day. Every every story is the same, and it it it, it, it shouldn't be. You know, every story is different because every character is different. So everyone reacts to things a certain way. Everyone does things a certain way. And that's why, you know, we don't we don't try to change people's personalities and make them into the same thing because that's taking away what makes you unique. Mm. So we want you to be unique. We want you to be yourself. Obviously, there's certain things that we got to change, you know, to fit the environment that we're in, which is pro wrestling, right? You have to stop at a certain moment in your story to let that character out and let people digest what you're doing. You can't just run through <laughs> every moment, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, and it's, it's one of those things where I was like, even just like the way that like, cause I, I, I continue like to, you know, and it's one of those things where you, and I guess how I'm going to put it, the way I learned, right. Was you like ask yourself questions as far as like your character goes in character, right. You ask yourself questions and you answer those questions and, in the character form and then as you build the world up you'll learn more about like how your character wants to move and like wrestle and work and just do all the things that they want to do so i know for me as far as like red dog goes like he he knows like he knows what he's trying to try to get accomplished and it's i i know that if i'm like somewhere if i'm like art of storytelling like i can like portray those things it is just one of those things where i guess i don't know for me it's it's, it's gonna be one of those things where i just like get back into doing reps and then just learning and understanding and continuing to grow like that side of him. Cause I do myself, man, I'm, I'm too, I'm too quirky to not be like, to not be always be serious. Like I, yeah. I make, I make dark humor jokes at the most inappropriate times. <laughs> like I remember one time I was working a match, I got kicked in the back and um, just out of nowhere, just out of me. Right. I just was like, Oh, right in the spine and like i thought it was hilarious the guy behind me was trying not to break because he ducked his face into my into my back and was trying not to laugh but like yeah the promoter didn't like it <laughs> right do you know <laughs> why like, uh yes because it wasn't really for their promotion it wasn't really a, a comedy style based promotion it was like they wasn't just a fan of it and i was like dang that's, yeah that's tough because that's those are things that I just do naturally. Like I'll walk. You can if I slip. you can still do that, but yeah. when you're getting when you're getting your ass kicked, you're supposed to be getting your ass kicked, yeah. and you make a joke <laughs> in the middle of getting your ass kicked. It kind of kills the believability of you getting your ass kicked. Yeah, but you you can do the same thing if you're the one kicking ass. So right. like if you're the one to hit hit him in the spine, you can make that that joke because you're in control. Right, so I, mean, I was gonna say the same thing, like, just flipping it. I was like, I was like, because I'm the person though that I will walk outside and I'll slip and fall on ice, and I do make those jokes because that's yeah. how I deal with the pain side of things. I just laugh at the pain, yeah. And I, that's, I guess, that's one aspect of me where, I, like, I think of like Red Dog is is like whenever he gets put into a hold or something to that extent, like he wants to laugh because that's how he deals like the trauma side of him and like building that layer up of him that like hell this is a combat veteran who understands that like hey just going off the rails and all we can do really is just laugh at it until like we can get back in control and uh because yeah i've definitely fallen in i broke a finger because i fell yeah. on some ice and i just laughed yeah. at the whole pain so and i guess that for me it probably was the most appropriate thing because i definitely I was in pain when I got kicked in the spine. <laughs> right, you, you can do that though. Like, but yeah. you can put that stuff in your in your promos. Right. Yeah, you just can't do it in the ring where <laughs> you want people to believe that you're getting beat up and you're in pain, and you have to sell that in order to get that sympathy that you need as a, as a hero. So that kind of like no, it definitely makes. Yeah, if someone believes that you're in pain and then you cut, you, you make a joke in the middle of getting beat up and they go oh he's just fucking around he's not in pain you know what i mean it, 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 <laughs> yeah it interferes with their ability to believe what's happening but that, now that but you, you can say it. you can definitely put that in your promos for sure because i don't know too many people are doing that right no it's it's yeah. definitely it reminds me of like mosh and thrash the headbangers like on yeah. smackdown i i don't know yeah. if you remember but like on smackdown you put them in the wrestle yeah. 
and they would get yeah. they would get put in a chokehold and then they would be like oh yeah this doesn't really hurt and then you're like what <laughs> yeah that's probably part game. of the reason why yeah, <laughs> why, you know? <laughs> yeah. no yeah. like oh you it's know it's kind of productive for sure i probably should yeah. do that <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of productive for sure <laughs> yeah no, and, ima- I- imagine if you went to the movies and and you sat down and the movie started and then you could see all the, the 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 wires and the cables and the green screen and everything that they edited out right would you would you want a refund i'm you know yeah, come probably. on you know you would want a refund you wouldn't want to watch that movie but but let's be but let's be real like if it's deadpool that we're watching it like those are things that we 100 percent expect like those kind of like behind the scenes you're things. you're not gonna watch that movie dude come on <laughs> Come on. The, I'm just trying wrong, to justify. <laughs> you're not going to watch that. You're not paying for that. You, you'll be $20. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. That. No fucking way. I definitely way. did a watch. Because I don't know. if Remember when like X-Men Origins got released before like all the CGI got cleaned up? And so they had all the wires and everything in it. And I remember yeah. like watching the movie and I was like, I'm not watching this movie. No, and I no didn't one's watch watching it. that. I yeah, didn't no one's watch watching it. That. Like we know, we know, you know, we know they're not fucking flying around, right? We know they're not really in this fucking country or whatever they say. We know that in the back of our minds. But when you're watching the movie, you're not thinking about any of that shit. Nope. You're just you just want to be, you know, entertained. You just want want a good movie. That's mm. all we want. Yeah. We don't want to see any of that shit. Yeah. And it's the same thing with pro wrestling, right? Same thing with pro wrestling. We don't we don't if we believe you're hurt, we definitely don't want you to tell us that you're not hurt. <laughs> 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 it, it's all a dream, fair, folks. Fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair. It's not. Just don't worry about it. It's predetermined. Yeah. Like this didn't really hurt. Like no, yeah, I definitely, right. I right. definitely. I mean, they, they know that. They know that. They don't want us. They don't want us to tell them that. <laughs> mm. So, okay, okay, take this over, right? What are some of the things that you kind of like look for in like wrestlers, like to come to your promotion? Uh, I mean. The first, the first thing is like, like I said before, is like who, who, who coached you? You know, who, who's your mm-hmm. trainer? Because um, again, that lets me know what to expect. Um, and then I really don't know, like you know, most, most people, I don't know. You know what I mean? So the only thing that we have to go by is, is who, who's your coach, and just you know what you, what you send for a match. So mm-hmm. like, do they, do they have their basics? You know, can. Can they tie up? Can they bump? Can they uh, hit the ropes? Um, you know, rolls. You know, basic stuff. Can they do the basic stuff? Because that's that's what everything that we do is built on is the basics. No one's reinventing the wheel here. You know what I mean? Um, as far as everything else, that's that's your personality, your character. You know, whatever you create in that sense is what's going to make you make you different. And obviously, like I said before, your execution on on the basics. How you how you do the basics. That's also another separator, but we're all going out there. We're all doing the same thing. No, it was no one's things. reinventing the wheel. It, it was something I learned and I heard. Although I don't, I'll be fully transparent. I don't have, I don't have the cash flow to do this. But uh, there were some dudes who wrestled in Japan, right? That's where they started, and then they went to Mexico and they started going back to school in Mexico. And they started, so they learned the basics of Japanese wrestling, then they learned the basics of like. Mexican uh, luchador and then they came to America and they learned uh, Americans basics and then they learned they went to Europe and learned the British basics and then formed their own style right they went back to Japan and they had all these basics all put together and uh, it was a contrary different styles but it looks really cool when they started flexing and put them all together and I was like man like that is so cool to learn so for me, like, yeah, I know, like here we have certain ways, certain things that we're looking for, like, I guess you said, right on the basics. And I remember like talking to Ruckus and just asking him like to show me different things that like people weren't doing anymore. And mm-hmm. chaining was like the number one thing he taught me. He was like, listen, yeah. there's this box here. I'm going to teach you that mm-hmm. there's a box. We're going to be in the box the whole time. We're not moving out of this box. And I was like, okay. And so he taught me like how to like perform in like pretty much like a, a three by three. And I was like, Oh, this is actually really kind of fun. Actually. I, I yeah. enjoy this more and more. And uh, <laughs> I remember like him and he was like, look, I can do all those stuff that all those guys can do look. And then he jumps on uh he jumps on the top rope and does a 
like a sh- what was it? a starship pain like he's like i can do that too he's like i just yeah. choose not to and i was like this was a this was two years ago i was like oh shit <laughs> like ruckus because yeah. go <laughs> yeah yeah uh so so it's interesting you brought it up like i had a conversation with someone recently i'm like um the basics are the basics right i don't think no matter where you are in the world the basics are the basics how you bump is how you bump. A flip bump's a flip bump. A back bump's a back bump. How you hit the ropes, how you hit the ropes. Uh, rolls are rolls. Tying up is is tying up. A body slam is a body slam. A hip toss is a hip toss. Right? An arm drag is an arm drag. It doesn't it doesn't change. There's different ver- variations, but I'm talking about the basic, simple, regular arm drag, not Japanese or any anything else. Just regular arm drag. Um, those are the are are basic stuff and they should be the same no matter where you are the things that change is is the psychology right the psychology is different in japan the psychology is different in america the psychology is different in in england the psychology is different in mexico uh the presentation is also different in all those countries like for the us we're more entertainment based right uh japan is strong style like a sport england is is freestyle chain wrestling right if you want to if i can master the auto chain wrestling you you focus on those guys those guys got it down like they they mastered the auto of chain wrestling in mexico it's 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 the presentation right the the characters their their outfit you know what they present is that they have that shit on lock right no one comes out looking like those guys you know they they, right. they take that shit to the to the to the, to the, the highest level you know, and, um, but he's right. Like when you visit all those different countries, you take away those things that they master. Right. Um, you know, I don't think the, depends on where you are. I don't think the strong style stuff really translate in, in, in America. Cause when guys stop selling the American audience gets very confused. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, they're like, wait a minute, this guy just got dumped on his head and he's up doing something else like what's happening you know it doesn't translate here but in in japan they, they love that shit they love it you know to them it's just it's fighting spirit and they're yeah. conditioned for that they've been watching that you know since the beginning of pro wrestling you know what i mean that's their condition to 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 seeing that whereas in the in america like you have to condition the audience to seeing that and appreciating that and you know some some audiences do but for the most part it doesn't translate no i definitely agree there, there i think that's what i like about the the us right is that we we have a well and i guess in japan they do too because let's be real that not, not everything is new japan or, or all all japan um but like in the us like we have like all these different places that we can go like just okay just for instance right new england pro let's just go with new england the new england area right you have a yeah. lot of entertainment spots right uh with like we can use rad pro for instance right or you have you know you know test of strength right you have like yeah. hard you know guys who can entertain but then you also have guys who like like can just hit hard right and then you look at grind like that's another company right like these guys are all they all have different things that they could pull but they all like they all condition their audiences to doing one thing right or to understanding one type and i i like that aspect of like being able to sit back and, and pull and look and watch people's matches and understand like where they're coming from and what they're doing or how they're getting the crowd to get involved because ultimately student of the game is what you have to be in this thing if you want to succeed yeah yeah and you gotta be you gotta be flexible you gotta be able to switch it up you know if you like you said earlier if you go out there and you know when we're in the back this the ideas that flow the ideas that we think the audience will respond to you know it's not you know that's not a fact this is this is how i think or how you think the audience is going to respond and when you go out there (laughs) <laughs> he's not sometimes it's like oh shit they're not buying what i'm selling they're not responding the way i thought they would and you got to be able to fucking you know switch it up you got to yeah. be able to figure out what the audience wants you know and that's again that's why you got to watch the first match because no two audiences are the same the first match is most likely gonna t- gonna tell you what the audience is, is looking for 
you know, sometimes they don't figure it out either, but you know, they're, they're the ones that have the biggest challenge, you know, but you know, I also on the flip side feel like, you know, the audience has been waiting for pro wrestling. They've been sitting here waiting for pro wrestling. So give them pro wrestling. If that doesn't, that doesn't work, which is rare. If it doesn't work, then they just want something else. They want to be entertained, want to be a part of the show, or they want to, you know, blood and guts, you know, and it's up to you to figure it out. Yeah, it's one of those things where I, I, I've had people ask me, they're like, where do you prefer to be on a card? And I always tell them, like, I like being first. I like just going out. I like being first. I like oh, being, first I like the being the curtain jerker. Yeah. First is the best. They haven't first seen is shit. The best. Right. <laughs> they haven't seen you get to set the you tempo. The like, yeah. That's what you get to do. <laughs> yeah. That's right that, for the that's, show. We're going to. Yeah. That, yeah. That's the that's, hard. That's the only hard part about being first, right? You set the tempo so if the crowd is the shit's like you're a part of that you know what i mean if the crowd is is fired up you're also a part of that you're the reason for that you know you gave them what they wanted and you set them on fire and now you can ride that wave till the end you know what i mean as yep. far as far as being last that's the most difficult spot on the card to be is last but you know if you're last that means you you're not the guy that's going to go out there and, and do everything that they've they've already seen. Everybody's seen that. They've seen everything. By the time you get out there, they've seen everything. The person that's last is just you're that dude or you're that girl. They're 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 paying to see you, right? Yeah. If you're last, they're paying to see you. Because by the time you get out there, yeah, by the time you get out there, they've seen everything. They've <laughs> seen everything. Yeah. All right, they've seen everything. You're not going to do anything different that they haven't fucking seen, but what they haven't seen is you right and that's that's the dude that's last that's the girl that's last is they haven't seen you they're paying to see that person that personality uh, no, that's I what like separates that. that's what separates you from everyone else on the, on the card and it's the same for everybody else they you know a lot of them just don't know it yet yeah so yeah be yourself that's what i hear be, be yourself be yourself be yourself. Yes. Be yourself. <laughs> that's the that's theme the only, of the show. <laughs> that's the only thing that's unique, man. That's the only thing that's unique. You know, you you as an individual is unique. There's there's not two of you. There's not two red dogs out there. There's only one. There might be someone trying to be red dog, but they're just trying to be red dog. Yeah. You're I was you're like, the only one. Yes. I, I, I will I, say I'm the only one who's spelling my name the way I am. However, there is another red dog. He is based out of Texas and you know. Rodney, don't kill me, because Rodney Mac is that guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, he's the original Red Dog. He's the original, yeah, no. as, as far as I know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like my, my nickname, my nickname came because of my first name. Like that's it. That's as OG as it gets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. All right, man. So real quick, we're gonna take this over to our favorite game. When we had you on last time, we did the uh 10 count questions. This time we do what's called pin submit DQ on this show, where I'm gonna give you three different categories. You got pin one, submit one, or DQ one. Okay. All right. So our first category, some people let you know very well. Uh Sammy Diaz, uh Ichiban, and uh Dustin Waller. Flash, I call him Flash. <laughs> flash. Pin one, DQ one, submit one. Let's see. DQ one, pin one, submit one. Let's go with uh, submit and flash. Uh, pinning Sammy and DQ in Ichiban. Okay, <laughs> I like it. <laughs> um, all right, so our next category: some familiar, some familiar uh, foes that will be brought into this, right? So we're gonna go with uh, Luke Cage. We're gonna go with uh, the Black Panther himself, T'Challa, and then we're gonna go with a uh, Falcon. You said Falcon? Yeah, Falcon. You know, same Captain thing. America, yeah, Captain I know. America. Yeah, Sa <laughs> same thing. Pin submit DQ. Yeah, same thing. Okay. So you said uh, Black Panther, Falcon, and who's the third? Uh, Luke Cage. Luke Cage. All right. We're gonna DQ Luke Cage. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna pin Falcon and and submit submit Black Panther. <laughs> I like it. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> so the last category, also some people some uh, favorites of mine, right? So we're gonna go with uh, Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, and Ice Cube. Dr. J Snoop and Ice Cube. We're gonna we're gonna uh we're gonna submit uh Snoop. 
We're gonna we're gonna DQ Cube, and we're gonna pin Dr. Dre. I like it. I like it because you know what? So we, submitting Snoop sounds about right because we ain't yeah. forgot that you was in Def Jam Fight for New York. All right, Crow, yeah. we was paying attention. <laughs> we was paying attention. <laughs> uh, so, listen, uh, those are like really all my questions. I just want to thank you again for coming on our show. And if you could, please remind our listeners and our viewers where they can find you. Uh, Facebook, IG, and uh, X, formerly known as Twitter. Uh, it's all the same. It's um, SWB for real. It's the number four on on ig and spelled out on on uh, x there you go he gave you all his handles he told you we could find him and so what does that mean like every great part of a wrestling match we gotta take this home because this is the three count podcast presents now entering 201 and i'm your host clifford red dog miller the man that leads you up that mountain to call wrestling and, you know, like we said, it's never about me. It's about who's entering. So who's entering? The underground king himself. That's right. Slick Wagner Brown is joining us. And uh, you guys know what to do. Tune into the next episode and be there. Or, listen, you're really just following us on all of our social media platforms. You're subscribed to our YouTube channel. You're following us on Spotify. You're even checking us out on Amazon Music because we're there, too. Or you're even checking us out on iHeartRadio or whatever that dumb jingle is that they do. You're buying all of our merch on ProWrestlingTees.com or ForYourWear.com. You're even telling your friends, your uncles, your aunties, your moms, your dads, your sisters, your brothers, your dog, your cat, your pet goldfish, who probably isn't your real, your original pet goldfish. You know, dad replaced it before. Or you're really just telling your enemies about us because we love haters too. So you're doing all that stuff, or really you're just kind of waiting for this episode. And you're waiting for that outro, and you're choosing another episode to listen to. Kawaii. What's going on? It is Clipper Red Dog, the man that leads you up that mountain called wrestling. And what we need from you guys is to kind of show some support, right? We want you guys to go to our YouTube channel at the Three Count Podcast, go on to our Twitch channel, Three Count Pod, or even our Facebook page, Three Count Podcast, and just give us a like, follow, subscribe, even give us a comment, right? Do all that cool stuff. Share it with your friends, share it with your family, share it with your enemies, right? Or you can even come talk to us and just chat us up, right? Find us on Twitter at Three Count underscore Pod. Find us on IG and on TikTok at Three Count Pod. Go ahead and leave us those comments. We want to hear from all of you guys. We're going to keep putting on videos and stuff like that. We want to keep making this content better. So we want your guys' support. Also, if you guys want to, go support us at ProWrestlingTees.com forward slash the three count podcast or even find us on ForYourWear.com. Give us the support. Show us your guys' love because we want to give it right back to y'all. So in the meantime, between time, love y'all.